welcome back to 30 at 6 on Cecil TV. I'm Allison Donnelly, and today is Monday, March 4th. And I'm Rob Churnside, and Allison, isn't that some kind of special day? Yeah, March 4th is the only day that is an action. Huh? Try to think of another huh? one. March 4th, you know, March. Oh, March 4th. Yeah. <laughs> well, by golly, how about... No. No. May 4th. Yeah. Ah. No. 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 <laughs> anyway, March 4th is also the eve of Fat Tuesday. Laissez yes. les bon temps brûlés. <laughs> so, uh, Fat Tuesday, then Ash Wednesday. Are you giving up anything for Lent? I've decided yes. Yes. I'm going to become healthy. And I'm going to go in training. I'm going to give up drinking beer. Okay. I'm going to eat healthy. Starting now? <laughs> starting, no, no, <laughs> starting Ash Wednesday. Oh, okay. And I think I've You're going to save the carrot until then. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to save that until then. I got tons of them. I got them. I believe you. From the Help Center in Elkton. Mm, where's that? Good Neighbors, the Help Center. It's behind the uh, senior housing. Oh, off, okay. Uh, 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 by the Donaldson Brown, or by the uh, One Brown Court and the Energy Assistance. Okay. They give out food and they help people. On March 28th, they're having a food distribution day. Oh, great. Okay. Good carrots. <laughs> so what's happening on the show tonight? Oh, what are you giving up for Lent? Well, um, a little bit of news. Uh, Cecil TV is giving up cable. We have decided to, so as you know, we're on Comcast 190 and Armstrong 225. But we've decided to cut ties um, with cable um, simply because most people are getting their news online, so we may as well follow I've seen them on their phones watching Cecil TV. Yeah, That's exactly. how I do it. Exactly. And so anyone who watches uh, 30 at 6 on Comcast or Armstrong currently, you can always find us online. You even, you even can just find segments of particular shows if you see us out in the community somewhere and you want to see um, that segment, you can go online and watch or you can find us on social media. You do like media. a search. On the computer or on your phone. Yeah, uh, our website actually has a pretty handy search function. Um, so if you go to Cecil.tv and search, I don't know, uh, the most one of the most recent things we went to was the the Cecil County Ice Splash. So if you searched right. Ice Splash, you'd find that exact right. and segment. As we go out and look for signs of spring, you can search in case you get interviewed or, or filmed. Yeah. Yeah, like at the uh, the upcoming um, the St. Mary Ann's Garden Market is a good example of a I spring event. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm done with winter. We've had seven uh, snow know. events. Yeah. And we got four more according to the caterpillars and the stones in the jar. So. Oh no. Okay. Well, it seems like we're almost there. Let's get on with it, huh? <laughs> yeah. What's on the show tonight? So we have uh, this month's uh, installment of Dialogue with Leadership. So we've got Dr. McCarthy, and I want to talk to him about um, school funding and also the Fight for 15 bill, which is being del deliberated on in Annapolis. Um, and then we've got a band called Downforce that won the Battle of the Bands at Cecil College recently. So those wow. are it's three... Um, High school, Cecil County Public High yeah, School. They're, they're, students. Yeah, they're young guys. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that'll be cool. That'll be great. Future music. Can't wait. Yes. <laughs> I'll finish my carrot then. Awesome. <laughs> and now for the news The public hearing for the county's master water and sewer plan that was to be held during tomorrow evening's Cecil County Council legislative sessions has been rescheduled for March 19th. Council Manager Jim Massey told the Cecil Whig that the council failed to post public notice of the hearing before the required two-week deadline. This announcement follows the news that plans for extending water service by the Town of Rising Sun appears to be in conflict with the county's master water and sewer plans that restrict development to the Route 40 corridor. Rising Sun Mayor Travis Marion and Town Administrator Calvin Bonenberger made their case to the County Council last Tuesday, saying that re Restricting the town's opportunities to serve the areas and foster development just beyond its borders would be the same as reimposing the recently ended moratorium that restricted development and the town's economy. A few weeks ago, we reported the latest scientific predictions of sea level rise that could impact Cecil County's shorelines. 
Tomorrow, the Cecil County Council will hear a presentation by Jim Bass, a coastal resilience specialist with the Eastern Shore Land Conservancy. Mr. Bass has been making the rounds with information about becoming resilient by preparing for the coastal hazards that climate change may bring. The ESLC has published a comprehensive report that it hopes will influence decision makers and public policy. And now for a word from these sponsors. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Charles. For 30 years, I have been practicing functional medicine and gentle chiropractic. Elkton Chiropractic Neurology is dedicated to enhancing whole body rejuvenation. Whether or not you are afflicted with injury or disease, we utilize a structural, neurologic, metabolic, nutritional, and energetic approach to restoring your body to its full potential. After coming to Dr. Charles, I'm better than I was before. You deserve to feel good and to have an active lifestyle, so why not call Elkton Chiropractic Neurology today? Good evening, and welcome to the March installment of Dialogue with Leadership. We're back with County Executive Dr. Alan McCarthy. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you very much for the invitation. Of course. So let's start with an update on Great Wolf Lodge. What's going on with that? Well, Great Wolf Lodge, we've entered into agreement. All the signatures have not been um, put on the paper yet, but we're basically moving forward. Okay. And hopefully within a very brief period of time, any little hang-ups will have been ironed out and basically be a done deal. Do you know, what is the projected timeline for breaking ground? Uh, I think that they intend to have it up operational by 2021. Okay. So they'll probably be breaking ground sometime, hopefully this fall. Mm -hmm. They'll have to get all the permits and do that. Yeah, I, I know people are looking <coughs> forward to it because it'll bring lots of jobs. Yes, it will. That's correct. They're expecting anywhere between 450 and 600 jobs being developed through the development of this piece of property. Hmm. And speaking <coughs> of jobs... Um, conventional wisdom would suggest that a $15 minimum wage, as the General Assembly is deliberating on currently, is bad for economic development and employment. However, uh, studies have shown that there are psychological and, and medical benefits associated with the $15 minimum wage, like decreased smoking and decreased teen pregnancy and um, increased birth weight. The county council recently unanimously opposed the Fight for 15 bill um, that, by the way, a version of which just passed the House in the General Assembly last week. Do you have any insight into the decision making that would lead the county council to that choice? I feel that the county council is afraid that basically by implying or basically creating a $15 minimum wage will have a negative impact on Cecil County. The primary reasons being is that we are very close to, to Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. Delaware, Delaware Which has have a much, very lower, low, minimum much lower minimum wages. And basically it'll take people out of our jurisdiction and direct business to areas where there's lower taxes. Another major problem with the minimum wage that I believe is they, they feel that a lot of entry-level jobs, especially those jobs which basically require very little skills and basically employ young people, mm -hmm. will no longer be available because businesses will basically try to go to either automation, robotization, or more computerization. Right, you gave the to, example or, of McDonald's. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Anytime that you hire somebody at, at a particular fee, you have to give them benefits, which basically, in many cases, almost turns out to be a 30% addition to whatever the hourly rate is. Mm -hmm. So for those reasons, a lot of our council people are not in favor of it. And uh, I, I personally feel that it would be, it, it's not really fair for Maryland. reason being is because Maryland is such a diverse state. We have a, it is. an area like Apple, you know, well, not Appalachia, but Allegheny County, Garrett County, which are basically more rural counties. Uh, the, the wage scales are not that high. They're close to Pennsylvania, they're close to West Virginia, they're close mm -hmm. to Virginia, and all of these other areas pay a lower wage. And then you have other areas like Montgomery County and Prince George's County right outside of D.C., which they have much higher scales. And consequently, they can more easily afford to pay a higher minimum wage to their employees, and especially Ocean City in the summertime mm -hmm. when it's real busy. So I would suggest that they have a regional or leave it up to the counties to determine their own minimum wage. But mm -hmm. that's not happening now. Right, yeah. Well, we will see. We'll see what happens. Like, like you said, opponents have cited the, the risks to businesses and how yes. it could really harm small businesses. But on the other side, um, proponents of the bill are citing these um, benefits to the population yeah, to the and, and workers. Um, Anytime that you can get more money into the hands of the, 
of the working class, that's good, but the thing is, at the same time, there are negative impacts caused by it, mm -hmm. and that's one of the big issues. Well, we'll have to chat about that next time you're in the studio, because we'll, by then, um, I think, I think, I forget exactly when session ends, actually. Session <laughs> should end probably the end of the first week of April. Okay, so maybe next time you're here, yes. we can talk about we'll, it. We'll, we'll know for certain. <laughs> There's a possibility the governor might veto the bill, but uh, I don't know if he can maintain the veto. Yeah, I'm, I don't know that he could. So, Cecil <clears throat> County Public Schools is seeking a $6.4 million increase over their FY19 budget allocation. And, and they've said that they would need more like $30 million to be on par with the state averages as far as per pupil funding. And declining enrollment and increased wealth in the county will likely lead to less and less money coming from the state. How are we going to keep up? Um, the only way that we can keep up is basically for the county to find ways to generate new, new revenues. So one of the problems is we brought lots of new businesses in, but because they're in the enterprise zone, they do not generate the tax revenue, which they really will anticipate after their time in the enterprise zone is basically expanded. For example, if you were to make a capital contribution, whatever you do to improve their property, the county only collects 20% of that the first five years. Mm -hmm. If that's 25%, 20% per year for five years, and then we get 30%, 40%, 50% in a decreasing scale for them, but beneficial to us. Right now, we're in the infancy of this program, so our revenues are not nearly what they will be in a brief, more than a 10-year time period frame. Mm -hmm. So without that, I don't really know how we can get more revenue for the public schools because they're they're growing their expenses at a far greater rate than we can grow the revenues. Right, even though they've they've yes. tried to slash funding, I think. <clears throat> yes, they have. For example, this year we're basically flat on, in terms of revenue. Uh, last year we basically had three or four businesses that refinanced, which basically provided us about three million dollars in extra revenue. But there's no guarantee, and we can't count on those things happening every year. Mm -hmm. So this year, we're basically will have to flat fund them. I'm going to provide them as much money as I can, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere near $6.4 million. Right. So the, the county council is set to deliberate on March, uh, next Monday, March 11th, I believe, on, on the county, on the school's budget request. Yes. How, how do you think that they will? Um, I think that it'll be more aligned with me. Mm -hmm. I can't promise what they're going to do. But I would think that they would be a six point four. It was a seven point six percent increase. Is a huge, huge increase. Right. I mean, I, I can understand their needs. I can understand their wants. But once again, we we have to maintain a balanced budget, mm -hmm. and the money is just not there without basically totally cannibalizing other departments and Cecil County government. Okay. Do you have any other updates to share? No, not at this particular time. We're getting ready to start the budget um, season. Uh, that should be very interesting. We have many departments which have very many needs. Uh, basically, I'm looking to see what we can do to basically repair, fix, and maintain our county roads. Mm -hmm. Our county road funds were basically depleted significantly over the last decade. Yeah. We were receiving close to $7 million a year, and we got down to 6000 600000 last year. But it's starting to move up. But still not enough to basically adequately do it, but we can start repairing them. Other than that, everything else in the county, I think, is moving pretty well. We've added 3,000 new jobs. We're bringing in new businesses. Hopefully, I'll be able to make some more announcements in the near future. We basically have cut cut the ribbons and we're putting water infrastructure on the Route 40 corridor, mm -hmm. which basically allowed those properties to appreciate in value and bring in new businesses. So I'm very excited about all the good things we're doing. And hopefully um, Cecil County is changing much for the better. I hope so too. I think it will be. <laughs> Dr. Alan McCarthy, thanks so much for being Thank here. Thank you very much. Okay, you have a good evening, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Good evening and welcome back to 30 at 6. I'm Hannah Rodenbaugh here with the band Downforce. Thanks for being here, guys. Hey, uh, thank so you. So tell me a little bit about yourselves. Uh, so my name is Adam Irwin. I am the drummer for Downforce and um, I go to Northeast High School and I am 14 years old. Hi, I am Alex Irwin and I am the guitarist and 
uh, lead singer and as of recently somewhat the bassist <laughs> of Downforce and I just had a blast playing with you two. Yeah, it's really fun. I'm Bryce, 20 years old, I go to Cecil College. Um, just like you said, recent, I recently joined after they won Battle of the Bands, which you rocked it. <laughs> so tell me about Battle of the Bands. How did you guys get involved with that? So we have been within the Cecil College music program with the Rockestra and the Rock Band Academy. And the guy who runs it, Andrew, uh, Andrew Dickinson, he had mentioned a Battle of the Bands and we had done it previous uh, the year before and we decided, yeah, let's do it again. And this time we were like, maybe we can try to get better than we did. Last year we got third place, or not last year, 2017 we got third place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's 20, yeah, no. That's the, yeah, the okay. now, now it's 20. Whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. so, and then, so we were like, okay, we'll try to do it again. And it went really well and we ended up getting first place, which I'm extremely happy that we did that. Yeah. So how'd you guys get together? Bryce touched on it a little bit. How did Downforce get to be Downforce? So Adam and I are siblings, which means we've constantly had each other with all of our music endeavors. Um, we've gone from, we, we've had some other people who come and go, but for the most part, it's just been Adam and I mm -hmm. that have been this consistent unit. And then, uh, Recently, though, we uh, came across Bryce from Cecil College, and we're like, hey, this guy's pretty cool. <laughs> and so we abducted him, and he is now here making us sound better by being the best member of the band, <laughs> because he's, he's Bryce Bird. I don't know about that. He's the yeah, best member of the band. Okay. So um, how'd you guys get into music? So when I was five years old, and when Alex was seven years old, our parents decided to sign us up for music lessons <laughs> because I had always liked music and I danced to music apparently. Um, and I got signed up for piano lessons. He got signed up for guitar lessons. And uh, my original piano teacher moved to Florida when I was eight, nine, around that age. And then I and got a new piano teacher lie. who then moved to Hartford County so then I decided to try drums because there was a drum teacher in the music lesson area. So, and I started to really like it and really enjoy it. And so now it's my thing. Alex has always been playing guitar since he was seven. So, yeah. Yeah. And as far as us listening to music, I think some of our earliest stuff we were introduced to by our parents was Led Zeppelin. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The Beatles, Led Zeppelin, classic rock was nice. our... Yeah, some yeah. good choices. That's what we grew up on. So other than those, what kind of music do you listen to to be inspired? What, what are your influences? So Alex and I actually have pretty different, well, <laughs> relatively different music tastes. Um, I prefer the rock that came out of the early 2000s, like The Strokes, The Hives, Interpol, um, the Killers, bands like that. Alex prefers the rock. Prefers the rock that came out of the early 2000s, including but not limited to Linkin Park, A Perfect Circle, and a slew of other bands from that uh, decade that I really can't think of right now because I am yeah. tired. Hmm. <laughs> so now that Bryce is in the band, he's contributing a little bit. What kind of music influences you? Uh, a lot of the similar bands and stuff, but I was raised Led Zeppelin, and then I don't know what it was about it, but I just stuck to that. I haven't had like any other song preferences over Led Zeppelin and uh, Pink Floyd and all ah, that, Pink all Floyd. that late stuff. Yeah. Uh, but uh, recently, I think a contender is John Mayer. Just his play style and how difficult his songs really are versus how they really sound. <laughs> um, because some songs just sound so easy and then you play it and it's some of the hardest songs that I've ever learned. Yeah. yeah. So I think we have a good idea, but just give me a quick description of what is the sound of Downforce? What can we expect to hear from you? Alternative rock. Alternative yeah, I think, I think that's yeah. pretty much what we used to say. Yeah, with yeah. Bryce is starting to mix the classic rock influences more and more. 
especially with his guitar effects and his style of playing, which is great. It really floods out the sound with just everything good. So, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I heard you guys play recently at an open mic, and the sound is really well rounded for such a small group. Yeah, it's, it's good very impressive. Thank you. Glad you like. um, and I also know that you guys write all your own music. Mm -hmm. so yeah. You're going to be playing some originals for us tonight. So, what's your writing process? Well, it's a bit interesting. We don't like say, hey, I want to write about this. We never really do that. It Instead, starts from a riff. It starts from a riff. Yeah, it always starts from like or Alex sound, will come up with yeah. a guitar riff, or occasionally I'll come up with a guitar riff, even though I don't play guitar. I'll just think of something. It's guitar, bass first. It's it's and then drums right after. Yeah. And then I put some sort of scat vocals over top of it, that really makes no sense, and that's okay because it's you know first yeah. time going yeah. through a song, and then. We keep rehearsing that, and rehearsing that, and then um, more and more lyrics solidify, and the story of the song starts to come together, and then we perform it. <laughs> yeah, and now with Bryce, we're kind of switching between Bryce playing bass and Alex playing bass, mm -hmm. so we're adding the bass lines in with the songs after we've written them. The so. key here is Bryce is good at bass. <laughs> so, do you typically write about? Um, you know, things that are personal stories, you know, things that you've gone through, or do you typically write narratively about a hypothetical story? So that's interesting because I do a little bit of both. Um, with the some of the stuff I've been writing most recently, it's been quite literally a combination of both, of taking my own personal experiences and putting it through the eyes of other people, but that's a little wonky and that's for a, a different day. <laughs> yeah, work, work in progress. Yeah, <laughs> work okay. in progress stuff. So it sounds like you guys are are really getting out there, and you're you're on your way up here in the local music scene. So what? Yeah. <laughs> where can we see you play coming up? Our next event is going to be at the Cecil Con on April thirteenth. Um, at Cecil College. Yeah, at Cecil College. And I believe that event is a uh, five dollars admission for non-students, and I believe it is free to get into for Cecil College students, but you can head to the Cecil Con Facebook page to find out a little bit more about that, and where can people get into contact with you? Um, so we have a uh, Gmail that we recently set up, and a YouTube that we very recently set up, <laughs> uh, <laughs> as in like, just set up today. Okay. Um, and that will be uh, banddownforce at gmail.com, as in B A N D uh, D O W N F O R C E at gmail.com if you want to send us an email. Um, and our YouTube channel is Downforce Band, although I think that's a little hard to find right now. But Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, we are Downforce, and this is our song, Grown. <laughs> 